Friday, June 28th, market analysis, Stan Ehrlich, good morning, about 1010 California time. Today is a very important day, and I'll tell you why. Stock market indexes I talk about first, then I talk about futures markets, and also interest rates are involved in this. So what we have is a market that has basically gone sideways for approximately six, seven days, eight, nine, in this current approximate price level, bit higher, bit lower. During this time, we've had two bearish engulfing AR cell signals. So far, one of them on the high day, 620. And it's notable that that was the day after uh, Juneteenth, which was a holiday in some markets, not all. Holiday in the spider, you know, the cash indexes, uh, but not in the futures and stocks and so on. But even if you took that into consideration, it was a small trading range on that Wednesday, the holiday, last week, the 19th. On the 20th, we had the bearish engulfing, the higher high, the lower low, and a lower closing price. And in my case, also the setup for my ER sell signal, which did occur. Went down a little bit, not too much the next day. And then again on Monday of this week, uh, Tuesday of this week. Yeah, today's Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. On Monday of this week, we had another bearish engulfing. So that's two now. The one on Monday has not worked, period. Small loss, scalping, blah, blah, no excuses. Today, very important, we got within ticks of the high of the reversal on June 20th, day after Juneteenth. And I wanted to mention that even if you did not have the price range during, during Wednesday, Juneteenth, you still would have been above the high of the previous trading day, Tuesday, last week, 18th. That would have also generated a bearish engulfing ER cell signal anyway. So I've got two, regardless. Second one didn't work. Yesterday, at one particular point, there was a bearish engulfing signal during the day, but it didn't hold. The market rallied and closed strong enough to cancel out the signal. That's why no red for yesterday. But during the day, there was a scalp trade that lost a little money. I'll show you. The important part about today is we rallied all the way up to the highest historic high about a week ago and stopped. Now it came all the way back down, making several sessions of new lows since the opening, and came down to significantly lower than yesterday's close, which we are now almost exactly at unchanged. The continuation of this weakness, and I'm going to switch to a very short-term chart on the E-mini September contract. I'm looking at one-minute data. So we opened here. There was the rally and another rally making new highs, another rally trying to, but then finally did. And then all of a sudden we get this volatility situation. We get a jab up, we get a very sharp break down, we get an even larger break to the upside, kind of looks like a broadening top forming actually. And then it collapse all the way to new lows for the whole day. And now a rally back up to approximately the earlier low an hour or two ago, whatever. I think it's about to stop rallying, and I think it's about to make a new low. Now, assume I'm right. What's going to happen here? We're going to be able to get down to new lows for today, and then we're going to start attacking support levels from yesterday. Let me shrink this a little bit vertically, and I'm going to move it up like this. Good, good, good. Then you're going to be hitting support area 5530-ish. If that is broken, and I think it could very well be, Remember, we're at 55.49 at the moment, and I'm talking 55.27 to 30. Call it 27, be a little on the safer side. Then, then a major low, relatively short term, but still major, 55.15. Here's a one-minute chart. I'm going to shrink it to a five-minute chart so we can see why that's important. 
This low at 55.11, 55.15 is the low that was generated two or three, maybe even four times during a 24 hour period. Most of it uh, afternoon on the 6.24 and the morning of 6.25 held, even tested kind of close the next trading day. And then again, yesterday, if we get down to 55.15 ish, we don't have far to go to break the lowest low for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days, more than a week, week and a half. And it will be one of the biggest bearish engulfing I've ever seen. Not that that makes it more powerful, but you would like to think so. It will be a red bearish engulfing ER cell signal even before that happens. But the point here is there could be a lot of um, either support that's dying away because of the way that it's acting or cell stop and or cell stops, whatever. That range here in particular, and I'm going to raise my little support level line to right about like there, that area. If it doesn't hold, and I think there's a chance, got a couple hours to go, you know, plus that it could get broken, uh, exists. Maybe it'll be Monday, Tuesday. The breakout to the downside means the same thing. But if you do it all in one day, it's a gigantic bearish engulfing. Okay, enough said. Spider, double top, same situation. And it's overbought. The daily data on the E-mini, I forgot to mention, got overbought. Honest to God, the double top could have a bearish engulfing of both highs. I haven't seen this since Silver did it a year and a half ago. Bigger formation, but same thing. I'm kind of getting excited here. Um, watch very, very carefully here the next to the close of the next day or two, frankly, the QQQs, double top possible bearish engulfing doing it's weaker faster quicker i don't I, I like that since i'm trying to justify being bearish and you know having this break has a gap to close under the market of 468.19 we would have to go down and uh frankly an awful lot an unacceptably large amount in order to break the lows between the two highs all in one day making the highest second highest high you know the double top and also breaking out to the downside would be very, very unusual. On the, let me get my mouse back here on the spider. Uh, that would be awfully large amount as well. On the E mini, it's not really that far away. So there's differences, of course. Now I want to go to the NASDAQ and we have not really on the daily data chart, NASDAQ, September futures, a double top. Some people might consider it, but I think what's important is today's high, guess what? Every time the market got to it or through it, it didn't stay there and closed below that 2265 level, give or take a few ticks. Now, it topped out at that number on the 17th. The 18th, the 19th, the high was just a little lower, 22.52, as opposed to 22.68 or something. But when it went through it on my bearish engulfing ER self signal day, the top of the market on June 20th, it immediately turned around way before the end of the day and went all the way back down, closing at the low of the body and probably just relatively late in the day making the low and then bouncing back a little on the close. Farther down the next day, and then finally a minor new low, new low at the beginning of this week. Came back up Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Today, it attacked kind of the highs, but the resistance price levels, the point here, and failing so far. Now, granted, it's up 19, but nothing like it was earlier. That's what I meant by not holding its own. And I think it's a hair below the opening, but right around it. And it could easily make lower lows. And if it gets down below yesterday's low, which does not look like it's out of the question, 
it'll have a bearish engulfing, but it did not get overbought. So I will not get a bearish engulfing red ER cell signal, just the bearish engulfing and the resistance level across these tops doing a really good job. Next, uh, the NASDAQ five minute chart. Here's that whopper of uh, volatility that we had all of a sudden. We're currently on a little bit of a bounce back. Frankly, I think approaching a level that could stop it again, right in here. And if it does and turns down and starts to make new lows, watch out. We've got YM futures contract, Dow futures, no new high, nothing particularly dramatic here whatsoever, frankly. Maybe a bearish engulfing, but we're nowhere near overbought or oversold. So we were overbought a few days ago. Okay, fine. It's turning down. Good. The major pattern here is bearish and quite the double top formation where I'm very, very happy to say we got a sell signal on both highs. April 1st, outside down day bearish engulfing overbought conditions within the allotted back test time and a bearish engulfing ER sell signal on May 20th. Go back to my recordings on those days. You'll see. So on the low between the two highs, guess what? A buy signal. Now, this is ersignals.com. A little plug for today. Eh, what's happened here? Double top formed. Started to work. No downside breakout. That would be down around 37, 861-ish. Then the uh, minimum downside objective is going to be 35, 067. Way lower. That matches a significant amount down in the other indexes. And if we get a bearish engulfing today, I'll do some warm homework on, on the weekend and show you my objectives uh, Monday and beyond on those other indexes. This one, I've already got it pegged because of the way it's formed. The five-minute chart, uh, one-minute chart on the Dow futures, LYM, eh, sideways for the moment, coming back a little bit. But there's that volatility. It wasn't quite the same in this index as the others, though. Interesting. Russell, major historical resistance, topped out. I've been talking about it for months. No surprise, nothing new. And the following in the chart's also kind of uneventful. <clears throat> Bonds have an outside down day. They have a bearish engulfing. Now, I'm not getting red because we were nowhere near overbought. But the bearish engulfing implies to begin with all by itself that you're supposed to go lower afterwards in a very general, broad sense, no details. And the downside objective on the small double top that it has formed and on Wednesday did break out of it to the downside right at that level right here and break out on the close, bounce back a little bit yesterday, but complete failure, higher high than yesterday, but when right on its tail, made a new low and is trading at the low of the body near the low of the day. And coming pretty close to my downside objective, which I think is going to be surpassed by quite a bit. I'm actually looking for the next major turn up again to be in the ballpark of 15, 14. Notes, bearish engulfing. All of what I said about bonds, almost all apply. Not the double top, unfortunately. The downside objective here is, uh, let's call it 108. Uh, okay, and seven and a half, 107 and two thirds. Crude oil, higher high for the trend, lower than where it opened, back below previous highs. That's not necessarily bullish. That's not. If it dropped a lot more, we are overbought today, in particular today, also several times in the last few days, with a bearish engulfing that did not work. And we could have a new bearish engulfing. It just needs to drop below yesterday's low. I know it's going to be in a support area, and I know it started to hold in this area quite well in the last week and a half. But if we have that bearish engulfing, then I think it's going to get broken and come down to the bottom of the trading range at 79 flat. And I'm not going to be surprised if it comes all the way back to 75.85 next. And that's bearish on natural gas, uh, heating oil crude. Natural gas has already started to break out of its double top formation today. This is the first high in the double top. Uh, let's call it 3.13. It's awfully close. 3.10. And then almost as high on June 11th. The lowest low between the two highs is right here. 
the depth of the formation has been measured by this yellow line. The minimum downside objective should be just a little under two or even lower. Today is the first day that it seems like it's going to close below the lowest low between the two highs. That's your breakout today, now. So, and it's not, well, it's close to oversold, but that's not unusual in breakouts. Breakouts frequently are either overbought or oversold about or exactly on the day they happen, but they usually also have follow through. A day or two more with the strength or weakness, whatever the situation, in this case, weakness, of course. So I think we're going to bounce off of 2.455 in a few days, maybe back up to around where we are here and then make it down into the support area again to the low of the support area. And who knows, it could still just break out downward or bounce once more time, one more time. But I do think it's going to go down a little below two. Next, heating oil. Almost a higher high, not quite. So there's no bearish engulfing. Otherwise, it would have been. But the feature here is the resistance area got stopped. We stopped it. It stopped it at the high of yesterday. And this zone has been in there for quite a while. I just didn't draw it in there yesterday to make it fit. And today's high is pretty darn close to yesterday's high. Couldn't quite make it. Resistance, same thing, same reason. And we made a low lower than yesterday. Yesterday's low. So close to a bearish engulfing. Not quite overbought. Came super close to overbought. Too bad. So resistance essentially has done the trick. Gold, silver, platinum, copper, then a little grain and meat. Rallying a little today in gold, not much. Very small, 4.3 at the moment, two. Uh, neutral, 50, very neutral, RSI. But the point here is double top formation got all the way down to the breakout level on June 6th, 6th uh, 7th and 10th, Friday and Monday. It came close a few days later. And now, Wednesday of this week, it challenges the, almost the exact same prices and bounces off of it on yesterday's market. But it's no real follow-through at the moment, only up 3.4 at the moment. I do think the market's going to break the support level at uh, 2304 and start to break down quickly. Then you have a downside breakout on a closing basis. The minimum objective would be about 2144 in a support area. I should drag this to the right here into the future as well, but that's what it is. So I think not today, but maybe uh, Monday, Tuesday, bearish breakout to the downside. Silver has already broken out of a head and shoulder top. Now, I didn't put my little markers across the shoulder on the left over here, but the date is April 12th. Not a bearish engulfing, too bad. The top of the market is on 520. So, and also too bad, no bearish engulfing. But you measure the distance between those two dates and you come up with the middle of my circle, which was a uh, Tuesday of this week. I had this uh, drawn on Monday. I don't think I did it for Friday previous week, but at least it was there before the fact or during, and I didn't get into what I was hoping, the middle of the circle, which would have been the high of Tuesday, and it would have been higher than Monday's high, but that didn't happen. Monday was the high. It did turn out to be a bearish engulfing. That's fine. Sell signal a little too early, a couple of days, a little too low price-wise, but still in the realm of convincing timing and price action. Classic. Just didn't get an ER sell signal, very unfortunately. Down we went, broke the neckline, classic, uh, Tuesday. Wednesday, we made a new low, didn't go anywhere on the close. A little bit higher yesterday after floundering around a little bit. No big deal today. We went up and touched the neckline almost exactly. Right smack dab at the rare high today, we stopped at the neckline textbook. We have so far come down fairly nicely to yesterday's high, about the middle of today's range, and more weakness the better at this point. We do not expect another test of the neckline. That is usually not true. Usually it's one time. After this, and it just happened today, you're supposed to go lower, maybe very fast. So far, you've got your classic formation, you've got your classic breakout, and you've got a classic today test of the neckline. The next step is new lows. Next, platinum. Uh, head and shoulder top formation is 
uh, slightly different than the silvers. We haven't broken out of it yet. It's a little wider time-wise. First shoulder, April 12th. Then I did get a ER sell signal on the top of the market. That was great. Love to see those. Now, down, created a low, possible neckline, rallied in the middle of my circle. It was again this last Tuesday. On Wednesday this week, it went a little bit higher than the middle of my circle, one day late, even on a closing basis, and started to go down yesterday and has a new low than yesterday's low and almost lower than Wednesday's low. I'd love to see this close below 9.9370. I would be relatively convinced that it's going to go even further to break below the neckline. The minimum downside objective on this head and shoulder top for, what is this, platinum? Yep, October platinum is all the way down to 790. Next chart. Copper, not a head and shoulder. Kind of missing the last shoulder in here. Not well defined. Timing is off. A variety of things just don't seem to work out very well. We did get a sell signal on the hypothetical first shoulder, but again, there's no real pattern. We do have lower lows, so there would have been a breakout. And there were a couple of bumps in here, but not quite right. Today, we almost made it as low as the lowest low, which is just yesterday, in a little support, and we're bouncing slightly. It's going to go down, I think, probably to below 4 and probably 3.8. I got to speed things up here. Soybeans. Testing historical support levels. Very important, but... A minor bullish engulfing at the moment. Very minor. Our, today, our low today is like one tick below yesterday's low. The high is way above yesterday's high and the day before. But we're holding not too much gains, only nine cents. So nine ticks, I believe. Cents, whatever. So um, bullish engulfing, yes. At a very important price level, yes. Let's see if this develops into something. Otherwise, it could fall apart. And that's what I'm fearful of. Guess what's happened to some other grain? I'll get to it in a second. Don't go away yet. Support area managing to holding it, holding a soybean oil. Big, big bottom formation still kind of exists, but slowly is getting damaged even more because we shouldn't have gone sideways in this price range. We just should have gone up from the first two weeks of May. So I'm iffy on this, but I know what it's about to happen one way or the other. It just hasn't started Keep in touch. Or meal, soybean meal. Bearish engulfing on the second high of a double top formation is broken out of it to the downside. The downside objective at a minimum is supposed to be uh, uh, 325, 60. The rally we had over the last couple of weeks was not that much. It was stopped and has now made minor new lows for a couple of weeks. But today is a doji, no big deal. I'm looking for my objective to get met, maybe more. Wow. Corn, huge, major. I mentioned exactly this kind of thing yesterday. Break out to the downside. They are often large trading range, big volume, heavy duty moves, either up or down, when very important historical support or resistance levels are broken into. It is done today. You could actually say it was done yesterday, but there was no zip pop bang to it so it was a little tiny bit ambiguous you were oversold you could have turned it didn't it crashed this is very convincingly a bearish breakout and now we are starting to get very oversold at 11 so it went down so much so fast that it got to an oversold level that causes me to believe today's low could be short term important and we now may be able to bounce back it's kind of into the range where we were. I'm going to say at the very most 442.50, but that probably is going to stop the rally and we'll make new lows after that. This is a downside breakout. And my question mark is only how much of a bounce are you going to get? And it could be pretty quick because of the incredible break that we had earlier. Okay, we're going to get some strength today uh, early in wheat, but it's failing near the middle or lower than the middle of the range, lower than where it opened, and it's come down lower than the middle of yesterday's range. So sinking for the moment in general. And yes, Tuesday, Wednesday, sorry, it 
like corn, tried like hell to bounce, and it did on Thursday, yesterday, and a little bit more today, but uh -uh, not really holding very well. Yesterday, it closed at the high of the bar, standard candlestick chart pattern here. We did get two sell signals around the top, none at the exact high, but this one, bearish engulfing ER sell signal shows up as red in the RSI. That tells the story down here. You see green, that is a green ER buy signal, not just because it's a green candlestick, but because it was oversold and it qualifies as a signal of mine. I just don't have the strategy running. And that's a sell signal. That's a sell signal. This is a sell signal. It didn't work, obviously. But this one is fantastic. After the sell signal, one lower close, two, three, four, five. One higher close, another lower, one higher, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lower closes in a row. Come on. As long as you didn't get stopped out on this rally, uh, the date, uh, June 11th, you could easily still be short from probably 688-ish. Trading at 570. Next, cattle. Almost a bearish engulfing, overbought conditions, currently trading near the low of the day at support. I think this could be an important turn. Drop just to a new low just now. Started to get into support. Um, first potential stop on the downside for a small, small rally, 184.20. Uh, then down to the support level, 181.50 through 183rd. That's a zone. But that stands a pretty good chance of stopping the break. We'll see what happens after that. Next, hogs. Bullish engulfing today. Outside up day. I have to turn this on for you. I'm sorry. ER scalp. Let's go with ER1 scalp. That's fine and dandy. And enable and click OK. This will take, I'm sorry to say, about 20 seconds to 30. And no, it's much faster. Sorry. That's excellent. So our buy signal was on June 26, green, bullish engulfing. Notice most of the others are either yellow or white. There's no everyday red or green. Green is a buy signal. It was on the first low. Yay! And guess what? On the second low, we've got another buy signal in hogs. Today, we need a higher high. Not doing great at the moment. Up on the day, hardly anything, but green is green, higher. Keep your eye on this. I want a move up and above and close above 92.50, let's call it. That would be a breakout of this possible double bottom. We are short. No, I'm sorry. That was a Freudian. I'm long because of the bullish buy signal on the 26th of June. Here is the trade line. That's the little green line right there. And we also were able to get into ER3 because of the Retracement with the low being below our bid yesterday. Looking good. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's check the E-mini real quick before I go. Coming down. Watch out. Very serious about this. You have a great trading day and profitable trading to you. Stan Ehrlich.